morning. Welcome to our Lord's house here at St. Paul, here on this day when we remember all saints and commemorate their witness of faith among us. Later in the service, we'll be remembering those who have gone to be with our Lord Jesus since last year's All Saints Day. We'll be uh, interspersing a, a hymn verse in the middle of that, and the choir has learned it, and they're interspersed amongst the congregation. And so listen for their leadership as well as, as uh, your singing along on that, that tune that will be played by, by Starla on the organ. And we'll intersperse names with that as, as uh, you'll see on the slides. Also, during this service with this All Saints uh, celebration, there might be some hymns that may not be as familiar to some of you. So I would encourage you, if it's not familiar, use your hymnal and uh, follow along with the notes in there. Even if you haven't been trained in reading music, just watch where those little ants go up and down on the line. Right, Sally? That's right. And, uh, and just, again, as, you, as always, focus on the words, which are based on our Lord's word. And uh, as we focus on his gift of life to us all through Jesus Christ, we thank him for those whose lives were here among us, but yet they are eternally with our Savior, safe in his arms, and we long to be reunited with them. And so again, we welcome all of you here, as well as all who will be worshiping online and on the radio. And we ask that if you haven't done so already, please fill out the fellowship pads that are in the pews and record your presence in God's house this day. If you're online, just send us a note online as well. And, and uh, if you have any updated contact information to share, please put that down also. Right after this service will be our quarterly voters meeting, and at the end of the, uh, in the midst of that will also be a, a special presentation from one of the subcommittees uh, looking at how might we uh, rework some of our facilities in the back, updating some things like bathrooms, which are necessary, and, uh, and so also to make them handicap usable, among other things, as we welcome and our life with one another. And so also during voters meeting uh, for kids, we've got Growing in God's Grace downstairs, and uh, Miss Tanya will take you downstairs, and I, I think a VeggieTales video, maybe something else. And there's, as always, we've got some goodies in the back and coffee just uh, before we get the voters meeting cranked up. Feel free to gather back there, but then stay for the voters meeting of reports, what's taking place, and then also that, that uh, informational presentation by the subcommittee. And also, as you probably know, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, national elections are this Tuesday. And I would just encourage you, those of you who are of legal voting age, vote. If you haven't done so already, if you have done so already, don't vote again. We don't <laughs> do that vote early, vote often thing. But, uh, but exercise your right to vote. Look over the ballots of the candidates. Talk to the Lord. Vote your conscience. Vote your heart. And exercise your right as citizens in the left-hand kingdom of our God but also relying on his grace and mercy because he is Lord all the time, regardless of what takes place in elections and all of those things. But there are various things that are always of importance as citizens. And so just again, encourage you, those of legal voting age, vote. And also those of you not of legal voting age, still learn the issues and, and also pray for our fellow citizens, pray for our nation, pray for our world, but especially pray for hearts to come to Jesus, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and there's no election about that. He's King, he's Lord, and thank God for that. And, and so with all of that, let's stand, let's greet one another with the peace of Jesus Christ, and let us worship. Peace be with you, Paula. 
We join in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the moisture in the air that's watering the earth. We thank you for the crops that are in the process of being harvested. And right now we also pray for the harvest of souls. We thank you, Lord, that you've always been at work and you will still be at work until you send your son back. We thank you for those who have gone before us to heaven. We thank you for their witness of faith and life. And may we be faithful until death because you've also promised to all who are faithful until death, you'll give us that crown of life that's been won by Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so, Lord, as we gather this morning, as we hear your word, as we come to your table to receive Christ's body and blood, his forgiveness for all of our many sins, for you to strengthen our faith as we journey this earthly walk, all until we reach your gates of that eternal home in heaven, opened by Christ through the cross and the empty tomb. In your name, Jesus, we pray this. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, We Praise You and Acknowledge You, O God, hymn 941. We begin as we were baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the opening sentences from various psalms. Light is sown for the righteous, and joy for the upright in heart. 
Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Beloved of God, we rejoice to be numbered with the saints. In confidence, let us come before our gracious Lord to confess our sins and to receive his gracious absolution. Oh, Almighty God, we repent of our sins the inherited sinfulness that is our original condition, and our manifold sins in thought and in word and in deed. In your mercy, forgive us. Create in us clean hearts, O God, that we may serve you as your redeemed people, now and forever. Because of the sacrifice of his beloved Son for the sins of all people, God has promised his forgiveness. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may you ever live as the saints with a bright and glorious future that you are in Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Inspire us, God of the ages, by the lives of men and women of faith from times past. Help us to learn from their witness, to honor their contributions to our heritage, and to consider their examples as we follow Jesus Christ, our leader and our master in our generation. In his abiding name we pray. You may be seated. We hear the word of the Lord. The first reading comes from Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they, and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3. How great is the love of how great is the love 
that the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. We stand now in honor of our Lord Jesus. We hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard God's word together, now we confess our Christian faith. We use the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We join in our next hymn. We sing for all the unsung saints, hymn 678.
God's mercy, grace, and peace are yours. In Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. Will you please join me in prayer? Dear gracious God, our Heavenly Father, O risen Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, the one who has brought us to faith, and gave faith to those who have gone before us through your word, as they also look to Jesus Christ, and now they see him. They're at his side. While we long to be there, Lord, we know our day will come. Let us not be afraid of that day. And as we show to this world that is still messed up with sin, and for those that don't know Jesus as Lord of their heart, and Lord of life and Lord over death, Lord, use us as your witnesses that they might see your love. How wonderful it is, how everlasting it is, and how it covers us over all of our sin. And so, Lord Jesus, as we long to join those who have gone before us, we know you're with us right here every step of the way, so strengthen us, we pray, as we also go out from these walls to witness in this world so that this world sees you. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that the words that I speak, the thoughts that go on inside our hearts, our minds, as we hear your word, as we ponder it, and then as we put your word into action, glorify your name, O risen Jesus, for it's in your name we pray, amen. Been a little stressful out there, elections coming. Thank God the campaign commercials will end, <laughs> except we know that they start up all too soon afterwards for the next round, right? That's because while this world keeps going, we continue to see how this world spins, not just on its rotational axis, but how the world spins things in this world. And it can get pretty confusing for what's out there. And like that zebra, have you ever become unraveled like that zebra because of stress? But God says, don't be distressed. Remember, no matter what, you're beloved and blessed. We heard that in John's letter. And also as Jesus spoke those words himself to the disciples on that mount where he preached that sermon. And he continues those words to you and to me today. And we need to hear those words because, like this author, Sandra Kring, once said, maneuvering through trying times is a lot like driving through dense fog. I didn't know it would be foggy this morning. <laughs> but our Lord did. Remember that as we hear the rest of these words in this little phrase here. But as you drove in the midst of the fog this morning, thanking God for the moisture for one, but also if it was pretty thick in some places, maneuvering through trying times is a lot like driving through dense fog. You can't see where you're going. You feel closed in. You want to turn back. And every mile feels like forever. Yet, Scared or fatigued, as you might be, there's nothing you can do but breathe. Stay observant. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. And trust that someone with keener vision than yours is functioning as your guide. Yes, God is the one with keener vision. And even though as we go through life it might seem pretty foggy at times in this world, remember, the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. And even though it's foggy outside, today's forecast, God reigns and the sun shines. For those listening in on the radio God reigns, R-E-I-G-N-S. He's the king, reigning. And the sun, S-O-N, shines 
always. He's risen, so the light cannot be put out. And he's with us to guide us through our foggy days, beyond just the moisture foggy. In this sin-darkened world, the fogs of war and famines, rumors of war, remember how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. John was reminding those to whom he was writing, you are the children of God. And his love for you does not skimp. He's not stingy with it. Perhaps you read yesterday's Portals of Prayer devotion. Looking at that word lavish, also in the book of Ephesians, the writer, Dr. Reed Lessing, reminds us this word lavish means extravagant. God isn't stingy, he doesn't skimp. He doesn't dole out his love with an eyedropper. But it's like Niagara Falls. Constantly flowing. Plenty of his love for you and for me and for all. He sends rain even on the unrighteous as well as the righteous, Scripture reminds us. Because he wants the unrighteous to see him for who he is. And John reminds those to whom he is writing, fellow believers of Jesus, the reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know him. In John's gospel, he wrote in the beginning, he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Many were looking for their own picture of a Messiah. Someone that they thought in their mind's eye, in their own interpretation of what God had said, would be that person to be sent to be their Savior. But Jesus reminded us, I am the Word that became flesh. I always was with the Father and the Spirit. Nothing in this creation was made without Him. But yet, when sin darkens and blinds people's eyes, it's hard for them to recognize him, and that's why he shows his love. And he lavishes it upon you and for me. The cross is so foreign to this world. Sacrifice? Give up for others? Serve? Yes, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for all. And so we need these reminders in the midst of our distresses. Remember, you're beloved and blessed. His love is lavished upon you and beloved. Now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. There's still some mystery to heaven. God gives us glimpses. And we get a taste of the four, a foretaste of the feast to come at his altar. But this side of heaven, there's still some mystery. It's a good mystery. And many of us like to watch mystery movies or read mystery novels. And so the Lord also keeps us longing for what is yet to come. What our loved ones who have gone before us are presently experiencing, but not yet in total fullness, they're still waiting for the bodies to rise, to be rejoined with their souls. But yet their souls are with Christ, safe from harm, safe from death. And we long to join them. What we will be has not yet been made known. But that's why we look to Jesus who is risen as we hear about him and his word after the resurrection. As John reminds us, you are beloved. He lavishes his love upon you. And when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. As Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 15, then we shall know fully, even as we are fully known by the Lord. 
And so imagine, in your mind's eye, look at that picture of Jesus with all those kids from all around the world. Picture that scene with your loved ones who have gone before us, as well as all the other saints from all the generations ahead of us, sitting down around Jesus while their souls... Again, there's that mystery. We don't know exactly what that looks like, but they do. We're catching up to them. But imagine all of those children of God just gigging, giggling with God. Thanking Him for that blessing of eternal life. No more sorrow, no more sin, no more sickness, no more tears. No more problems, no more pain, no more stress. Oh, we long to be there. But we're not yet there. God still has work for us to do because He still has that hope within us that He's placed there because of Jesus. And John finishes this section of Scripture by saying, Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies Himself just as He is pure. That pureness of Christ is in you. Yes, we long for that day when it's in its complete fullness in heaven. But we got it right here. That's part of that mystery. And that hope that will be fulfilled and completely realized that day when Christ returns. Or he calls us home in death, whichever is first. Either way, it's good. And he says, you're pure. And while we're in this sin-darkened world that lives in its own fogs and tries to come up with its own explanations, there's a couple things that I ran across regarding this purity. Pursuing purity in opposite world. This world is opposite of what Jesus calls us to be. Remember those Beatitudes? We'll look at them in a little bit as well. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, who are meek, who serve, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's not how this world operates. That's why we look to the Lord to guide us every step of the way. And no matter what happens in this world, our work is to let them see the purity of Jesus Christ. And so in this opposite world, as you look at this uh, facial cleanser, purity made simple. I don't know who this company is, but their description of purity doesn't quite follow what God says. And so as we listen to these worlds, this is what many in the world say. But remember... What God says is different. How does the world see purity? Philosophy, and that's the name of this brand, evidently. They say purity is natural. We come into this world with all the right instincts. We are innocent and therefore perceive things as they should be rather than how they are. Our conscience is clear. Our hands are are clean, and the world at large is truly beautiful. It is at this time we feel most blessed to begin feeling young again. We must begin with the most basic step of all, the daily ritual of cleansing with one-step facial cleanser. Buy this, and you'll be totally clean. Maybe for faces, but not to cleanse us from sin. Purity is not natural. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Couldn't take anything from this world to cleanse us. But from the Son who came from heaven, joined Himself with humanity, His perfect blood, His righteousness, is what cleanses us. We come into this world with all the right instincts. We're innocent and therefore perceive things as they should be. That's what God intended to begin with. But it got lost in the fall into sin. Our conscience is clear. 
Not because of our sinfulness, though, but only in Christ. Our hands are clean, but yet we get them dirty in this sinful world. Only through Christ can our hands be truly cleansed. And yes, then, with clean hands and a pure heart, cleansed by Christ is how we enter heaven. The world at large is truly beautiful. Well, there's some truth in that. The world that God made, yes. But we haven't been the best caretakers of it. For that, forgive us, Heavenly Father. It's at this time we feel most blessed to begin feeling young again. We must begin with the most basic step of all, the daily ritual of cleansing. Being cleansed by Christ daily. Thank God for his waters of baptism with his word. That as we daily drown the sins, but the new person arises in Christ. Not coming from a bottle. but coming from the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through his cross, through his empty tomb, through his waters of the font, that's how we're made pure. Yes, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, purifies us from all sin. Another company makes this abundant hope soap named Purity. That won't cleanse the sin but Christ and Christ alone will. But he does give abundant hope because he cleanses us with his purity. And again, he says to you, blessed are you. When you walk in my ways and leave the ways of the world behind because they will only detract you from your path. But God blesses those who are poor in spirit, who are in need of comfort. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly, who are hungry to do right, hungry and thirsty for righteousness. God blesses those who are showing mercy because they've received mercy. The pure in heart, the peacemakers, And blessed are you when you are persecuted for my sake, says Jesus, because they're really persecuting him. But he's already risen. He can't be harmed. He can't be hurt. And that's the attitude that those first apostles and disciples went to the ends of the world with. You can do your worst to us because we've seen the best our Savior does. He came back to life, even though people had done their worst in crucifying him, rejecting him. He conquered. He makes us pure. And he says, you are blessed and beloved, and the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. Yes, you are Beloved and blessed, a child of God. Don't let anyone in this world or Satan or his demonic minions tell you otherwise. John reminded the people that he was writing to directly, and the Spirit reminds you and me. Beloved, God lavishes his love upon you. You are my child, and let's walk together because you're blessed. You're beloved. And so let your light shine, that light that Jesus gives you. Shine it before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Yes, God wants every single soul that doesn't believe in him yet to also come to faith, to be blessed with his lavish love, to be named children of God and to join him in that growing gathering of God's children giggling around him in heaven because they're free from sorrow, free from sin, free from death, free from pain, eternally righteous. That's what's waiting for us. And we long to have that mystery fulfilled, do we not? And so as you come to Christ's table, 
join in the mystery of how he joins those who have gone before us and are at his side in heaven together with us and together with every other single Christian around this globe, joined by God as his children, lavished with his love, blessed and beloved. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that goes beyond all of our human understanding. May it guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Amen. As we thank God for all of his earthly blessings, we return to him our tithes and offerings, thanking him and asking him to use them for the work of his kingdom beginning here in West Point and going to the ends of the earth. We also join in singing Jerusalem the Golden, hymn 672. Please stand as you are able, as we join in the celebration of the saints. The words of the Lutheran Confessions give specific reasons for remembering and honoring the saints. The Apology of the Augsburg Confession states, Our confession approves honoring the saints in three ways. The first is thanksgiving. We should thank God because he has shown examples of mercy, because he wishes to save people, and because he has given teachers and other gifts to the church. Two more reasons for commemorating the saints noted in the Lutheran Confessions are the strengthening of our faith and the imitation, first of faith, then of other virtues. And so we remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, for they were created by God to offer him praise and thanksgiving forever. God gave new life to them through holy baptism nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table, and in his mercy summoned them to his eternal presence so that they may continue to serve him forever. 
in joyful anticipation of the resurrection to life eternal, we remember before you, O Lord, those relatives, friends, and fellow members of this congregation who have gone before us in faith. We offer thanksgiving for the gift of faith and hold fast to the certainty of your promises that where you are, there your servants shall be also. Bless the memories of the saints among us and keep us firm in the certain hope of the great reunion to come in your gracious eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Mary Nyman. Dean Knuppel, Arla May Knuppel, Janelle Baresh, Norma Pagels, Chad Reppert, All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Ruth Bertram. John Engelbart, Vernell Wagner, Doreen Meyer, Brian Priestley, Trudy Jones. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Jim Horn. Ronald Fireherm, Gwen Breedy, David Posh, Becky Adams, all of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Karen Marks. Leona Storm, Buck Bassett, Judy Ward, Mike Armstrong, and Clarence Beyer, who passed away Thursday, October 31st. Lord, we also give the opportunity for those who have loved ones who have gone to be with you since this last November 1st whose names have not yet been called out. As members are invited to call them out, we give you thanks, Lord, for their faith. Logan Hoyt. Don Charman.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these saints' faith. There was a gift from you, the same as the gift to us. Let us be faithful until death, and may we follow in their footsteps as they followed Christ, and may others follow in our footsteps, finding us faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Gratefully, we pray for the church at large and for the fellowship we enjoy as God's holy people, remembering the saints in other places around the world who share in our faith and hope and love and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Thankfully, we pray for those who serve in leadership positions in our national synod, our district, and our local congregation, asking that God may bless their work among us and for us in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. Confidently, we offer our petitions for the sick, the sorrowing, and all who this day are in need of our prayers, especially those with new health concerns, Ella Hageman, those continuing to battle cancer, Kristen, Courtney, Jerry Haas, Bob Klitz, Kenny and Ron Kripka, Alan Legband, Gina Metschke, Carol Schultz-Stevens, and Doug Seabrandt. For those who dwell in care centers, that their light would shine brightly to their fellow residents and those who provide care for them, as well as their families. Laverna Lambrecht, Gloria Luby, and Eva Wickert. Another request for prayer of body, soul, and mind for Ruth Baird, Trajan Bickelmeyer, Jim Hiddle, Lois Johnson, Loa Kirsten, Tammy Kramer, Dwayne, Mary, and Taylor Kripka, Peggy Watson, and Cecil Woodka. Comfort the family of Clarence Byer, who recently passed this Thursday, to join you. Walk with them, Lord Jesus, as you wipe away their tears, reminding them of the resurrection. We also give you thanks for the marriage of Lisa Wagner and David McCreary yesterday. Continue to guide them in their walk with you, Lord Jesus, as their marriage is called by you, as all marriages, to reflect your love for us and all humanity. Father, we also pray for those who serve and protect, not only in our local communities, but also our country and our world, as police, fire service, EMTs, first responders, healthcare workers, and the military, as well as their families, as they all put their lives on the line for us, Lord Jesus. May those who don't, do not yet know you as Savior and Lord come to know that you laid your life down for them and for all, but strengthen them in their care for all in times of need. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for all missionaries around this globe, including every single missionary here at St. Paul, but also to those at the furthest ends of the earth. In particular, we pray for Jenna Engelhart, Josh Lang and family, and Ruth Maita and family. Bless the word as it goes forth from them to touch the hearts and lives of others in their neighborhoods. And may your family continue to grow by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all of our petitions, Good Shepherd, be answered according to your gracious will, and that they be supported by this fellowship of saints. Help us to cherish the company of all of God's people, and seek to bring care in Christ to all with cheerful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. As we go into the voting boxes on this Tuesday, Lord, grant that we may choose trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generation. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O saints of God, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for all you have done for your people in Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you for all of creation and for every good gift with which you bless us. Accept our praise, Lord, and grant that all who partake of Christ's holy body and blood this day may be filled with your heavenly peace and joy. As we receive the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, grant that we be sanctified in body and soul and spirit, and finally be granted our place with all your saints in glory. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always.
Please stand. May this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you, keep you firm in faith until everlasting life. Depart in peace and joy for his service. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you have shown to us in the words of Jesus Christ, your Son, the way of those who are truly blessed. Grant us grace to live out our days as your people who walk in ways of meekness and faith, following the path of our Lord and imitating the faith and virtues of the saints in our lifetimes. Send your Holy Spirit to direct and counsel us in all things and bring us at last to your eternal kingdom. In the name of Christ we pray, Amen. Amen. Beloved and blessed children of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Sing with all the saints in glory, hymn 671. Reminder of the Voters' Assembly right after the service, fellowship in the back, and also uh, growing in God's grace for the kiddos during the voters' meeting as well. And go in peace and love to serve the Lord.